protests in Rome, more peaceful demonstrations over economic equality. Hundreds of thousands of workers called for government reform, including a boost to pensions and expanded investment programs. The mass demonstrations there, the biggest in more than four years. For more on the protests and the tensions they're causing between France and Italy, we are joined by research associate Maxime Larrivé. He is with the EU Center of Excellence at the University of Miami. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Maxime. Uh, the recall of a French ambassador to Italy, as we mentioned, has not happened since World War II. How serious is this? Often, you know, historically, recalling an ambassador precedes a total breakup of diplomatic relations. Are we there yet? No, not at all. I think it is, it is all about symbolism at that point. Uh, you're absolutely correct. The last time uh, the Paris recalled the ambassador from Italy was in 1940, so very different time. Uh, France and Italy are both funding nations and funding member of the European Union. Uh, the two countries are, are well intertwined when it comes to uh, economic policies. This is really about getting that fight at the symbolism, like a, a symbol fight, uh, for all domestic political gain. I think that's, that's what is at stake right now. And let's go back to the cause of this. Why would these Italian officials choose to side with France's opposition? What, what's the root of this particular move? So uh, the Italian uh, government, the current government, was elected in March 2018. Um, at that time, uh, the Five Star Movement won most of the votes, and then the Liga which is the extreme right and the northern part are led by uh, Matteo Salvini, decided to form a joint government back in June. Uh, and at the head, the prime minister, uh, Mr. Conte, has been ruling. Right away, uh, Emmanuel Macron, the French president, established himself as an internationalist, a pro-European leader, and, and he has not uh, shied away in, uh, in, uh, in his opposition towards nationalism and those forces. I think it was very clear in his speeches and his address during uh, the, the 100th anniversary of the end of World War I, where he talks about it. That's one side. On the other side, the, there's been tension between uh, Paris and Rome on migration issues. So back over the summer, there was this boat of, uh, full of migrants that was rejected by the Italian government, the Aquarius. Uh, Emmanuel Macron criticized uh, the Italian government for not doing this. But yet, the French government refused to uh, welcome those migrants. And at that point, the tension uh, began to escalate uh, around those migration. Now, the other side of it, with uh, the vice president, uh, vice prime minister, uh, Di Maio, uh, it is as well for them a political gain in a sense where the European elections for the European Parliament are upcoming in May 2019, and uh, both parties and both uh, individual Salvini and Di Maio are kind of campaigning, already campaigning with different platforms and different objectives. And speaking of platforms, this battle isn't just between France and Italy. We're talking about a battle between these establishment and non-establishment movements in Europe. How does it reflect the, this ideological divide in Europe currently and the fragility of the unity of the EU? Yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go as far as saying the fragility of the unity of the EU. I think uh, the current negotiation on Brexit demonstrates uh, that the European Union is very much united. Uh, right now, it's really, uh, you know, they're very clear on defending the foundation of the European Union being the common market, the euro, and other elements and other normative and value aspects. This has been, uh, you know, um, at the heart, and the Brexit negotiation proves it. So I don't think we should talk about the demise or disintegration of the EU at that point. Uh, what we're seeing is with the emergence of this populist leader, either on the right or on the left, there has been some tension uh, trying to address those elements. Uh, they are trying to deflect the domestic problems. I mean, the European Commission just downgraded the forecast for economic growth in Italy to 0.2% for 2019. They are in technical recession because the last two quarters, uh, they've, they've seen recession in Italy. So, you know, thinking and looking at the outside, identifying an enemy that can kind of divest, uh, you know, the, the real problem at home, this has been a common trend throughout the EU. It could be in Poland, Czech Republic, uh, Italy now. Well, thank you so much for your perspective. Maxine Larrivé with the University of Miami. Thanks so much. Thank you very much.